Hey, Takeover Church, thank you so much for checking out today's message, whether it's on podcast or on YouTube. We are so grateful that you are here. We pray it blesses you and encourages you and that you will like, share, and subscribe across all Takeover platforms. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless. We love you guys. Good morning, Takeover Church. How are we doing today?
spiritually, Lord, would you just make us whole again? And I just pray that as we sing Oceans, this is a song some of us may have known for years now, but would you just meet us, Lord? Would you just come down and let your Holy Spirit just fill this place? And as we sing, the Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Would you just, just lead us, Lord, wherever we're meant to go? Maybe that's just putting one foot in front of the other this morning, Lord. So we just give you, give you our praise. We give you glory.
the end of service, we take some time to pray, just like we're going to do right now. But if you need specific prayer underneath that banner, there's going to be a prayer team that is ready and willing to pray with you. We have a few words of wisdom this morning. We have somebody who might be in need of prayer for fingers and hands, somebody who might be in need of prayer for a head injury, and someone or many people affected by COVID socially. So if any of those things apply to you, please come up after service and we would love to pray for you. As a church, we're going to take some time to pray right now with those in our community who, who need to feel a touch of God this morning. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Bow your heads and let's, let's lift up our family right now. Father, we are lifting up someone who is praying for strength and energy for early work mornings. Prayer for an ear surgery this Wednesday. Prayer for a niece who has one leg shorter than another and surgery is being considered. Prayer for a mother's unspoken stresses and asking for help when needed. Prayers for a father who we are continuing to pray for who gets results back from tests. Prayers that cancer is contained in his stomach or better yet, completely gone. Yeah. Miracles can happen when he moves. He starts chemo on Friday. Jesus, you are so good. We believe it. We believe that miracles can happen, Father God, when you move. And we are asking you, praying you, begging you to move in these areas, Jesus. Your people need you, Father God. We are crying out and asking for healing in bodies, in minds, in spirits, Jesus. Give us the energy to get through the day of early mornings. Give us the healing that we need to see the miracles and an ear being restored and cancer being gone and a leg being Repent! 
Christmas. Yeah. So we got the old water bottle. We got the collegiate. It's This is new. This is a new water bottle for the takeover. <laughs> All right. Can I, can I give away the first one? This is this is uh, our boy. He's been up and coming. He's got the best flow, the best beard in the game. And when I say that, everybody knows who it already is. It's our boy Tober. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gave uh, his first team rally. Yeah. Do you public speak a lot? He's like, oh, no. But he just he just came up and he had like a few a few things that you should probably ask him about. A few one liners yeah. that were just yeah. like wrapped everything up together. It was just yeah. incredible. So he's come a long way. One of my best friends here. And uh, I love you, dude. And you deserve this. Rousters coffee. <laughs> Go Rousters. Not Rousters. <laughs> but you deserve it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So we have another one. Um, we're just highlighting our volunteers here because it takes a whole village to make church happen. That's right. Um, and this one, Goes to Kennedy Michael. Yeah. Kennedy has um, stepped into Kids House and just has been doing a really good job. And as her mom, it's really incredible to see her lead, and it's also really incredible to see other people pour into her so she can be a better leader. So thank you for answering the call. You yeah. rock, girl. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't pick that for you. It wasn't like I was like, hey, you better give it to my daughter. <laughs> Someone else saw it. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, what so else back, we got? Back on schedule, we are uh, highlighting life crews. We got four crews that we're highlighting. Boys crew and babes crew, they meet every other week. This where week. This, week. this week is happening. If you're not plugged into that, get into it. We, we break down the service and we really do life together. And it's super awesome. Porn Free is another group. Uh, we're like 7% of churches in America have a program to help men and women with porn. And we want to start stewarding that and building that up. So yeah. if that's something you struggle with, that's something that I lead. Um, and it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and tea time is something that Nikki leads where moms come and get together and they kind of take some time off, talk about things, talk about the Bible. And I, I assume they drink tea. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome. So if you want to be involved in any of those things, you got the card, the welcome home card, fill that out and uh, yes. plug yourself in in one yeah. of those areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can sign up at the table as well. Yes. yes. Um, all right, so the other side of uh, getting involved in church and making church more of your own is serving. Oh, yeah. So you can build community in your crews, but you can also build community by joining other That's people right. and putting something together. That's right. Together. Um, it's a really powerful, cool thing, and we have a lot of needs because to pull this whole thing off, there's a lot of different things to do. So, yes. music, um, you can work Sky Bible, you can play up here, you can work in the kids' house. Yeah. So, we today are a representation of everyone who's involved, and we would like to grow and get bigger and see yeah. what else is out there. So, the more people that get involved, well, we evolve. Yes. So, Ooh. think about it, sign up out there. Even if you just have questions, put your name on a list out there and yep. someone will contact you yes. and we can chat about it. Yes. I believe in creation, actually. Uh, <laughs> oh, Zappy! Uh, so that's our. Uh, we'll break that down tomorrow when you bring it After service, as Adrian said, we have prayer. We're a church that believes in miracles and calling uh, and, and exercising the authority. Of, of the Holy Spirit that he has given his yes. disciples, yeah. which is all of us. Yes. So um, we we come to the back, we pray, we come together, and we are actually expecting something to happen in that moment where healing can happen, breakthrough can happen, and freedom comes in one way or another. So if after service, let's press my heart, come see somebody back there, and it always is awesome. So. Yes. And now, without any further ado, it is time for the message by the one and only Matt McClure. Yeah! 
Oh, the Monday meetings that are going to take place. Oh, stop. Oh, that's so good. I can't believe Jody, the sweetest person on earth, just got roasted by Zach Kramer. Yeah, that was wow. <laughs> pretty awesome. Hell had no fury like Eric Michael scorned. Uh, pray for it, Zachy. Good morning, Tango Church. How are we doing? Good morning. Oh, man. Anybody besides my wife doing good? Yeah. Fantastic. I cannot say more without go without pausing real quick. And I don't know about you, but I am acutely aware of my desperate need of God this morning. I am acutely aware of His goodness and His faithfulness. And I think right now is the perfect time to give Him a God-sized praise for the God-sized job that He has done in every single one of our lives. Hey, Amen. Can we just make some noise for the Because I know him. And I believe that when you know him, you will know what he is and who he is and what he's done. He is so much bigger. He is so much better. He is so much better than the things that have come against us in our lives. He is able. He is more capable. He is so much grander yes. than our very small imagination and limitations of our earthly bodies can even begin to comprehend. Amen. He is God. Amen. And there's not a single thing on this earth, there's not a single thing in heaven, there's not a single thing in hell below that can match him, yes. that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Your father is the biggest, baddest man in the yard. Yeah. And he has fought for his kids, and he will continue to do so. Amen. So how about we praise him like we know who he is right Amen. now? One, Amen. two, three. Praise him. Let's go. <laughs> Fantastic. And I also want to say, hey, Takeover Serve Crew, y'all are the real ones. I love you so much, and thank you for making church happen today. This morning, we are continuing our series called Dunamis. Who's enjoyed the last couple weeks of this series? Come on, come on. This morning, we are continuing it just so that we are all on the same page. Maybe you're new with us this morning. Maybe it's a word that's unfamiliar to you. It's probably unfamiliar to a lot of us. But Dunamis, anytime in the Bible that we see the word power, this is, the, in the original language, this is the Greek word for power. But power doesn't actually, uh, it does not zero in in the very definition of what dunamis actually means in the Greek. We just did the best that we could with the words and the, and the utilities that we had available to us at the time. But dunamis' literal definition isn't just simply power, but ability. So when we see God's power, what the Bible is actually telling us is God's ability. First message we had in the series, we talked about how Jesus told his disciples when he was getting ready, he was sent back up to heaven. He said, stay until you are clothed in dunamis, until you are wrapped up in God's power, until you are literally, physically, spiritually given God's ability. And then we know that the Holy Spirit came upon them. And that is how every believer walks in God's ability. Amen? Wow. Friends, this is what it's all about. This entire message series is about ushering in and unleashing God's ability in Grand Rapids. God's ability in your life. God's ability in your single season. God's ability in your marriage. God's ability in revival. We're not interested in being a religious people. We're only interested in being a revival people. Amen? Amen. The revival only comes by dunamis. So this morning, we're going to continue. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Title of my message is, for those of you that are taking notes, title of my message is, Dunamis over sight. Dunamis over sight. And this morning we're going to be coming out of 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 9 to kick us off. If you have a Bible, you can go there. If you have an app, you can go there. And if not, you can also see it on the Big Sky Bible. It's going to be up here. Y'all ready for the word? Yes, sir. Let's get it. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 9. Here we go. For we know that in the tent... That is, our earthly home is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. 
For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed. So that, that's what, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared for us this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in this body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith. And not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage. And we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. We're going to pray and we're like, God, crack that open. Amen? Amen. Fantastic. Father God. Father God, we just thank you for Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father God, right now, we just thank you that we're two or more gathered there. There, in your name, there you are in the midst of us right now. So God, I don't know what it is, but in this moment, God, we just proclaim, fear go, Holy Spirit come. Fear go, Holy Spirit come. I don't know what it is, God, but I feel like there's a sense of overwhelming fear in the place this morning. I don't know if it has to do with political stuff. I don't know if it has to do with COVID stuff. I don't know if it has to do with medical stuff. Whatever it is, God, if there's anybody in here this morning who has fear overriding their joy in this moment, we just say right now, we silence that fear. Fear go, Holy Spirit come. God, we just invite you into this place. Come and move. Shake your people. Make us, shake us down to our core and rebuild us back in your image this morning. God, we want to look and leave more like your son, Jesus. And Jesus, by the name of Faith Hill Church, said, Amen. 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 Woo! Dunamis over sight. Now, if you've been with us for a length of time, you probably know that I need Pastor Matt. I love the Apostle Paul. Paul is awesome. But the reason I love the Apostle Paul so much, probably more than so many of the other writers, and it's not because I identify a lot with him, but it's because, which I knew, it's because Paul uniquely, when he was writing these letters, when he was stewarding his churches, when we have all this material, Paul's story, both pre-Jesus and post-conversion to come to know Jesus, shape his wording, shape the scriptures, shape what he is trying to tell us. I feel like we can never look at Paul's letters, Paul's scriptures, Paul's writing, the Apostle Paul. We can never look at his material in the Bible and be uninformed of who he used to be and what God had done in his life. So to play catch up real quick, this will be a blatant oversimplification of who Paul is. But Paul, prior to being Paul, he was actually named Saul, and he was part of the Jewish hierarchy, he was part of Jewish law, he was commissioned by Jewish law to go and persecute Christians. Persecution back then meant something different than now. Persecution now is like somebody tweeted something bad about you. Persecution back then was, we grabbed you by your ankles, we put a brick, on, we put a board on top of you, and then crush you slowly with rocks. Like, that's what Paul did to Christians. Before he was Paul, he was Saul, he would round up Christians, followers of the way, and he would murder them for Jewish law. That's literally who Paul was. So then all of a sudden Saul, he meets Jesus. Jesus radically changes his life. He has a God encounter like none other in Scripture. It's incredible. Paul from there, he has a radical conversion. He becomes, he goes from Saul to Paul, and then he begins to lead other churches. Can you imagine, friends? Can you imagine? This is why it's so important that we would we read the scriptures, especially this. We need context. Context not only brings clarity, but context is key. Context makes it all make way more sense because God is saying something louder, something bolder, something crazier than you and I understand. We have to know where this is all coming from. Because here's Paul, right? comes from this whole thing. How many of you know that when you go from leading Christians to their death to leading Christians into life, God must be wanting to do something pretty significant with your life. Amen? Yeah, amen. But what if I told you this morning that's every single one of us? What if I told you this morning that every single time in your life prior to knowing Jesus, every time you sinned, you were leading someone to death, mainly yourself. Every time I watched porn as a young man, I was leading myself into a place of death. Every time I was 
uh, cheating or stealing or whatever else I got into as a young man and young adult. I was actually leading myself to death. And I'm sure a lot of us can understand that. A lot of us can identify with that this morning. That we have been in a time and a season where we were missing the mark, falling short of the glory of God. And we may have been leading ourselves and maybe those around us, maybe the spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or someone else to a place of death. Well, the second you come home and know Jesus, the second he becomes Lord and Savior of your life, suddenly it's no longer about you leading yourself or anybody else to death. Now you are on mission, on point, to be leading people to life yeah. and life to the full. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? Yeah. If you go from leading Christians to death to leading Christians to life, God wants to do something significant. And that's important to know because it's Paul. What also is important to know is about the church in Corinth. Corinth is a buck wild place. We talk about Corinth. Corinth is crazy. Corinth, it's a lot like 2021. Not much has changed. Just the world got smaller because of the internet. Now we know about it. But Corinth was crazy, okay? Corinth was a place and literally anything goes. You know, when you hear about Amsterdam and you hear about a bunch of other places, you're like, no, 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 there's no rules in Europe. Like, everything goes. No, 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 Corinth, literally anything goes. There's the people who were doing whatever they wanted, with whomever they wanted, whenever they wanted, however they wanted, even if the other person didn't want it. Like, this was an insane place. And the reason Paul is writing such, I don't know, fever-ridden words, the reason he is so overwhelmed for them, the reason he is so brokenhearted in his letters, is because Corinth began to seep its way into the church. This is the church in Corinth. And not only was now Corinth a mess, but the church in Corinth was a mess. And now the church began to condone Corinth's behavior. And what we see here is a church that falters to culture. But how many of you know as a church, we're not called to falter to culture. Right. But instead, culture is the falter, not to the church, contrary to popular belief. But culture should falter to the name of Jesus. Yes. You want to know why the culture doesn't falter to the church? Because the church falters to the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Amen. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? Yes, 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 yes. So here's the situation. We got Paul, used to be Saul, murderer. And then we got Corinth crazy, doing anything with anybody that they wanted to. It's leaking into the church. And Paul, he is pleading. He is graveling. He is coming to them just unabashedly, just concerned and overwhelmed for their well-being. And I love this first piece of scripture where he says, for now we know that if this tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God. Not a house made with hands, but eternal in heaven. I love that imagery that he puts there. Amen. Come on, somebody. He puts this imagery and he is saying, while we are at tent, we are not at home. We are belong. We are destined to a place in heaven, even if this earthly body is destroyed. And then he goes on to say, where well, we are going to circle in this morning. And he says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. I think that's important. I think that's paramount. I think that's actually something that the church we been walking with Jesus. I just turned 30 in January. We walked with Jesus since I was 16, so it was 15 years of, of following after God. And I kind of feel like maybe this is something that we have, uh, we've brushed over. Maybe it's something that we've glossed up. Maybe it's something that perhaps we haven't taken it as serious in recent years. Maybe we've put it on too many t-shirts. Maybe we've listened to the Jeremy Camp song too many times. Maybe we have watered down what Paul is saying here, given the context to a corrupt system in a corrupt church in a corrupt place that has fallen, that has broken, that has given into things that God has gone ahead of Jesus and rescued us away from. And he's saying in that context, knowing who he was, where he's been, what he's done, what the church is, what the city is, what the situation be. He says, we walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> Friends, yeah. could it be that this is more important than we could ever think it was? Yes. 
Could it be that this is something that should matter far more to us than just putting on a nifty t-shirt and having a bumper sticker and having it be a devotional? Should this be something that we actually radically and emphatically we place in our lives as to be our posture as Christians? We are called to walk by faith and not by sight. We are called to walk by dynamis and not by sight. We are called to walk by power and not by sight. We are called to walk by God's ability and not by by sight. Am I preaching to anybody yes, this morning? Do damage over sight. Yes. But why is that? Why is that, right? Like, why is that? Why, why is that so important? It's so important this morning, I believe, because Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and Corinth, Corinth has allowed everything that's been going on around them to determine what they believe within them. Corinth has allowed everything they see going on around them. This church, he's not writing to heathens or unchristians or Gentiles or unbelievers or Jews. He is writing to the church, the Jews and the Mies in Corinth, okay? That's who he's writing to. And he says this, he says this beautiful phrase, walk by faith, not by sight. And that's because Corinth, like you and me, if we're not careful, we will begin to allow what we see in front of us to determine what we believe within us. Mm -hmm. Does that, that hit home with anybody? Again. I'm going to hold up and rewind just so we can sit with that for a second. Corinth, like you and me, we are so prone to allowing what we see in front of us to determine what we believe on the inside yes. of us. Why does that matter? <laughs> Why that matters? Because what you believe will determine what you go for. What you believe will determine what you go for. And the reason this is so important to the church, the reason this is so important for you and to me today, the reason this is everything. It's because you and I, we are called not to just be Christians, not to just check in our religious punch card, not just to come to a church on a Sunday morning where they sing two out of our favorite songs and we get all tickled and we hear a good message about our finances and then we go home back to our lives. That's not Christianity. That's Americanism. Christianity. Christianity is where our sight plays no role in our lives, but our faith is everything. <laughs> Walk by faith and not by sight. Why is that? Because it's impossible to follow Jesus by your sight. It's impossible to follow Jesus by sight. Wonder why? It's impossible to follow Jesus by sight because where Jesus is taking us will require faith. It's impossible to follow Jesus based off our sight because where Jesus is taking us will require faith to go. Where Jesus is taking us will require faith to get there. Jesus, he does not lead by sight. He only leads by faith. Friends, we couldn't even meet Jesus by sight. What makes us think we could follow Jesus by sight? We could even meet Jesus by sight. What makes us think? What makes us so arrogant? What makes us think that we could follow Jesus with our own sight? What makes us think if we could even meet our Lord and Savior face to face, that we could follow our Lord and Savior by sight? Friends, it takes faith to follow Jesus because where Jesus is leading you will require faith. Where Jesus is leading you will require faith. Your Monday, when you start following Jesus, that's going to require faith. Your marriage, when you start following Jesus, that's going to require faith. Amen? Amen? All the wives are like, yo. Yeah. Mine. <laughs> When you start following Jesus, 
your career, not your calling, your career, they're not always synonymous. Your career, it's going to take faith to follow Jesus. Your calling, it's going to require faith to follow Jesus. When you have to begin to step out of your normal, monotonous, day-to-day -day routine, and you actually have to begin to follow Jesus where he's leading you, your eyes are no good because you will not see where you're going to put your next step. You will not see what's in front of you. You cannot see with your mortal eyes what he has for you. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no tongue has confessed the goodness of God, the plans he has for his people. Preach anybody this morning. So much to say that the Bible even goes on to say, his word is a light unto your path, which means your eyes are no good on your path. You cannot walk by sight and walk in faith. You cannot walk in sight and walk by faith. Friends, what is before us will always rob us of what God sent Jesus to give to us, which is faith, which is dynamis, which is power, which is ability, which is life and life to the full. Amen. Where we're going, we don't need sight. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> Back to the future, okay. Back to the message. <laughs> That's oh. I'm charming, I know. It's good. Oh, oh, it. God. <laughs> Quickly how the church turns on you. Um, you see, this is important. This is so important, friends. What if I what if I told you today? What if I told you today that your sight has robbed you? Your sight has robbed you of heaven more times than you will know. Yes. Your sight has misled you. Your sight has betrayed you. Your sight has led you so astray because we have allowed, we are prone to allowing what is before us to determine what we believe within us. Mm. I mean, 2021, right? It's 2021. We live in a time and a culture and a world where the, the last thing you want to be is a truth denier. Oh, uh, he's a Christian. There's a truth denier. Oh, uh, no, no, no. They're just a truth denier. Like, this is an actual thing that's happening, but I'm sorry, and that's all good and well, and I can appreciate the world's perspective on that because we can't expect people who don't know Jesus to understand people who follow Jesus. So excuse us if we're going to look a little weird during a season called a pandemic and election weird year. But friends, I came to tell you this morning that we don't live according to truth. We live according to our truer truth. Amen? Amen. We have got a truer truth than politics. We've got a truer truth than death. We've got a truer truth than Biden. we got a truer truth than Trump. We've got a truer truth than medicine. We've got a truer truth than our own thoughts, feelings, desires, actions, and motives. Yeah. We have got a truer truth. Yeah, and in order to walk in that truer truth, it's going to require that you walk by faith and yes. not by yes. sight. Yes. Friends, sight has robbed you of more than it has ever given you. You see, sight... Sight will always lead us into disorder. You see, sight has robbed us of the very thing. The very thing that you and I, we were birthed to do. Man, were we birthed to see? We have eyes. Yeah, yeah, but we were birthed for faith first. You were birthed for faith. I wish somebody would just proclaim that right now. Can somebody just say, I am birthed for faith? I am birthed, birthed for faith. faith. Come on, that might not be proper grammar, but it's good preaching. <laughs> It's because it's grammatically incorrect because it's not true. Okay. Half the Bible is grammatically incorrect. So, it's true. God, it's what we want that way. But why that is, is because 
you and I, we were birthed to give glory to God. Every single thing about you was birthed, was made, was designed, was created to give glory to God. But your sight, your sight will lead you astray. Your sight will lead you into disorder. But glory only follows order. And if, if you are being led by your sight, your sight will lead you into disorder and it will rob you of the glory that God put you on this earth to give Him. Everything about you your hair, your eyes, the way you sing, the way you work, your at your work, uh, what's it called? I don't have great work ethic. Like <laughs> everything about you, in proper alignment with the Holy Spirit, with the image of God, with who He made and intended you to be. Everything about you should give glory to God. But if you allow what is in front of you to determine what you believe inside of you. That will be corrupted. That will be fallen. It will be faulty. But faith. While sight will lead you to disorder, faith will lead you to order. Wow. Sight will lead you to feeling powerless. Faith should lead you to feeling powerful. Sight so often, isn't that right? Isn't that right? Sight so often, when we see something, we become overwhelmed by it, we become overcome by it, we become taken apart by it, and all of a sudden our sight has led us astray from a position in Christ where we are powerful, covered in God's ability, and we have faith to believe for miracles, miraculous, breakthrough, and crazy things of God, heaven invading earth kind of faith. Amen. But our sight. Sight leads us into a sense of powerlessness. Suddenly 2021 or 2020, March 2020 happens. And there's a widespread pandemic and the media's just barking confusion and disorder. Our neighbors are living in fear and suddenly because of what was before us on the inside, all of a sudden we're confused and we're plagued by fear. There's political mayhem and each candidate and there's a bunch of them at one point in time. They're all vying and lying and doing all these things and it's crazy and we're like trying to figure out how to vote for God and all this mess. And then because there's a war brewing in the political realm, suddenly there's a war brewing in the personal realm because of what you saw. All of a sudden, you're here on a Sunday... And we're like, yeah, need prayer. We're going back there. We're going to believe God for great things. We believe James 5.16 and every other single Bible verse in there that talks about healing. We've seen it. We've seen lights grow out. We've seen black spots on hearts removed. We've seen God move time and time again in church. And then suddenly, our eyes lock eyes with death. And the report says death. And the CAT scan says death. And hospice says death. And suddenly we are face to face with death. And we have allowed what was before us to change what we believe within us. And suddenly we are considering the ramifications and truthfulness of death. Sight so often will render us powerless. But faith, faith should make you feel powerful. Dunamis should eradicate doubt. Power should pillage darkness. God's ability should eclipse your ability. Even your ability to believe. Walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Friends, faith, faith Faith is the only commodity in heaven. That's why we walk on streets of gold. Faith 
is the only commodity in heaven. That's why we walk on streets of gold. Faith is currency. Faith is action. Faith is faithfulness. Faith is dedication. Faith is everything to heaven. Monetary is everything to earth. God takes that and he flips it. You're going to walk on streets of gold, but you're going to move in faith. You're going to walk on streets of gold, but you're going to pray in faith. You're going to walk on streets of gold, but you're going to worship in faith. You're going to walk on streets of gold, but you're going to praise in faith. Amen? Come on, somebody. Has anybody got some faith in the place? Yeah. Where Jesus is leading you will require faith from you. Why do you recommend this? Why do you reckon this? I, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about this. I spend too much time thinking about this. I always wonder, why does it take faith to follow Jesus? Why can't I just lock eyes in a certain direction and see him physically before me and all of a sudden all my emotions align to him? Why can't I just see him right in front of me and now all of a sudden all of my thoughts about women align with him? Like, why can't I just look at him physically in front of me, touch him, go to him, and then all of a sudden, everything that's wrong with me goes right with him. I can't just, why? Am I alone in that thought? Like how much easier life would be if Jesus was like physically right here and I'd be like, Jesus! I got problems. He's like, I know. But why is that? Why does it take faith to follow Jesus? It takes faith to follow Jesus because Jesus only sees in faith. It takes faith to follow Jesus because Jesus only sees in faith. It takes faith to follow Jesus because Jesus only moves in faith. It takes faith to follow Jesus because Jesus only speaks in faith. It takes faith to follow Jesus because Jesus only acts, only moves, only unleashes his God-given ability in faith. Why does it take faith to follow Jesus? Because Jesus only deals in faith. He only moves in faith. He only loves in faith. He only encounters in faith. Your sight cannot bring you where your God wants to take you. Your sight cannot bring you where your God wants to take you. Amen? Mm -hmm. So Paul, Paul, you see, he starts off by saying, while we are in this, there's a phrase here at Takeover Church. It's not on the platform, but I'm going to say it right now. Um, it's something we always joke about behind the scenes. But while we're in this meat bag, while we're in this tent, Paul puts it, we long to put our heavenly dwellings, don't we? Yes. We long for it. Yes. He's like, man, while we are away from the Lord in this tent, in this makeshift home, this thing's not permanent, this thing's not promised, this thing is not underneath God's sovereign authority, but your soul is, your spirit is, who you really are. That has a destination, that has an anchor, but you are in a tent. God will heal your tent, God will redeem your tent, God will make much of your tent, 110%. I didn't mean to put 10 in the center. God will do that. But Paul's saying something incredibly human here to the church in Corinth, who's obviously confused, who's obviously jacked up, who obviously has problems. They've let some things in from the world and changed their beliefs on the inside, and now they're messed up. But he says, I get it. I get it. It's hard to quote Garth Brooks standing outside the fire. It's hard to be the one standing in the rushing rivers of life and attempting to stand when the current is going another direction. It's hard. It's hard to be a Jesus follower when the world is going one way, your emotions are pulling you another, and you're just fighting to remain. It's hard. You long to put on your heavenly dwellings. 
can I tell you that I also empathize with that? Like, March 2021 and March 2020 have been really hard months for Matt McClure and a lot of our team members here to take over church. We've been wounded personally both times. We've had people just gossip and lie. And it's been a lot of hurtful things in these two months, these two years. Yeah. So much so that our worship pastor, Amy, and I, we actually wrote a song called Longing for Heaven. Which, if I say it from the platform, that means she has to do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get with it. Challenge accepted. <laughs> but we understand. I, too, have a longing for heaven where the confusion cease. The heartbreak is gone. Yes. Where I feel at home and I'm complete in my worries and my cares and my, all my days of feeling defeated and laid to waste like we talked about last week. All of the vision and chaos I experienced, all of the things going on, I too have a longing for heaven. But what Paul says, what Paul says is completely countercultural to how you and I are, to how you and I were raised, to how we are in Western society. So what Paul says is this. He goes, I understand you have a longing for heaven. You want to put in your heavenly dwellings. You would rather die right now and just go be with Jesus than live this thing out in earth and fulfill your assignment here. I understand that. It would be easier. One, Christian, you and I, we don't have the luxury of easy. We don't. Being light in the darkness is always hard. Being light in the darkness is always hard. There's a lot more darkness than there is light. The light shines a lot brighter. But it's hard. But it's easy to get discouraged. But Paul says something completely countercultural about how you and I think and how you and I act and how you and I respond. You see, the world says, when the, when the, when the, what's the expression? Forget the expression. It doesn't matter. When it gets hard outside, when it gets difficult, when things come upon you, when you are facing pushback and resistance, and when you get tired of going against the grain, right? When this is where you are at, your breaking point, the world says, give up and get out while you still got your health. Right? The world is just like, no, leave. Forget that. They don't appreciate you. Your voice isn't heard. They silence you. 2021, I tell you. Silence is a phone function, okay? It's not a... Anyway. But the world will tell you, get out while you still can. Get out while you got your health. Get out while your best years are still ahead of you. Get out while you're still young. Get out while you can still date. No, forget your marriage. Marriage is hard. Get out. You're still young. You can still have kids. You can still meet some nice lady. Get out. Get out. Go while you still have your sanity. Go! That's what the world says. But Paul, but Paul, completely understanding, Paul has a lot of hard times. Paul is in jail more than he's not, okay? He's been shipwrecked, he's been bit by a snake, he's been uh, you know, a crazy tribe of multiple wanted to kill him. Like, lots of crazy stuff has happened to Paul at his time, okay? When he was in prison one time, he was up to his waist in new new, okay? Like, Paul has seen it all. <laughs> but he goes, don't throw off your clothing. Paul says, you want to have your heavenly dwellings. You want to go to heaven. You want to be done. Don't unclothe yourself. Which goes back to week one when Jesus says, wait here until you are clothed in dunamis. Paul says, do not throw off your dunamis. Do not throw off your dunamis. Do not take off your power. Do not cast away your ability. Do not throw off God's promise, God's sovereignty, God's Holy Spirit. He's saying you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You have been wrapped in. You have been clothed in. Don't quit now. Don't unclothe yourself. Instead, what Paul declares is further clothe yourself. What? Paul, don't you know it's hard? Yeah, go further. Paul, don't you know I want to quit? Yeah, go further. Paul, don't you know they want to kill me? Yeah, they want to kill me too. Go further. There's more armor available. There's more clothing available. There's more power available. There's more ability available. There's more Holy Spirit available. There is more available with God. Don't take off your clothing and die. Throw yourself further into 
be clothed. The world says, pull out, run, fall back. God says, go further. Believe harder. When doubt comes, you pray for Dinanus. When fear comes, you pray for faith. When worry comes, friends, you ask for God's ability. When you are feeling burdened and broken, you pray for breakthrough. This, this is what happens for Christians. You don't have to quit. You don't have to let your longing for heaven define your story. Instead, you can further put on heaven. Yeah. The amazing thing Paul says right here is like, the more clothed you get, the more your morality, or mortality, sorry, more your mortality will be swallowed up. What? Man, it's really hard not to have sex before I'm married. Yeah, yeah, but the further you clothe yourself in the Holy Spirit, the more your mortality is swallowed up. Oh, it's really hard to tell the truth. I just have a pathological liar. But the more you get in the truth, the more you clothe yourself in the truth, the more you lace up your sneaks in truth, the more your mortality is swallowed up. Ah, it's really hard. I just feel full, full of doubt. I feel wrecked by fear. I am insecure. I just don't know who I am or what I am. I don't know what to do. But the more... It's really hard to believe the Bible. It's really hard to believe this God. It's really hard to believe what you're saying, Pastor Matt. It's really hard. Yeah, 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 I understand that. And God understands that. That's why I put it in this word. But the more you throw yourself into the clothing of Christ, the more you will be swallowed up. Jesus said it best in John 3.30. The less of you, the more of him. You've got to decrease if you want him to increase. The more you throw yourself into your clothing, into your sonship, into your daughtership, the more that don't shed your dynamis, shed your doubt. Don't shed your faith, shed your fear. Don't shed your ability, shed your anger. Don't shed your breakthrough. Shed your burden. Cast it onto Him. This is what it looks like to have demands over sight. Sight will lead you to certain death, but demands will always lead you to life. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? Can I tell you what Paul says next? Mm-hmm. He says this in 2 Corinthians 5.14. Y'all ready? Yes. I got to tell you, man, I just want to be further clothed. I want to put on more clothing. I want to put on more power. I'm not. I'm interested in revival, not religion. This is a revival house. Yeah. I don't care if there's 40, 50 people in the room. This will be a revival house. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not interested in having religious clothing on. Friends, if we're not careful, sight will lead you to religious acts. Sight will lead you to religious tradition. Sight will lead you to religious thinking. Sight will lead you to believing that religion is enough. Suddenly, you aren't following Jesus, you are following a man-made religion. And I'm sorry, I don't care what 2021 wants to tell you, the created world did not create the creator. The creator created the created world. Do I need to say that again? The created world did not create the creator. The creator created the created world. Jesus isn't some white man's western idea. He's an eastern man who came from heaven. To show us the way. Yes. To clothe us in his power. Friends, it takes faith to follow Jesus. And I would, I would dare challenge us this morning. I know I was going to read another scripture, but this dawned on me. I would challenge us this morning that if you're following your walk, your journey with Jesus has not required you to have faith, 
Maybe we need to step back and reevaluate if we're following Jesus or we're following religion. Are we following Jesus or are we following religion? Jesus will test everything you believe and what is left over is everything he says. Religion is full of everything you believe and then finding a bunch of people who agree with you. You know how often Jesus doesn't agree with me? Often. And I don't mean that to condemn. I mean that to challenge. I mean that to have an honest evaluation of life. Because, friends, faith is so much sweeter than sight. Faith has so much more promise than sight. Faith will feed us. Faith will grow us. Faith will lead us. And faith will take us to places and heights and, and prominence that you never would have imagined was possible just by looking at your life. That's who our God is, amen? Amen. So I want to look at this piece of scripture real quick. Is this good? Yeah. Come on. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 21. Paul files it up with this. He says, For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him. For their sake, died and was raised. From now on. Somebody say, from now on. From now on. From now on. Therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, who? Anyone. Say it again. Anyone. Anyone is in Christ Jesus. He is a new Creation. A new creation. A new creation. The new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ Jesus reconciled us to Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world back unto Himself. Not counting their trespasses against him, no, but trusting us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be, no, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of Christ. We might become the righteousness of Christ. I love this because Paul... He's continuing his letter to Corinthians, and he is handing out rebukes. Now, if you remember, rebuke isn't a teardown. Rebuke is a turnaround. That's, right. that's how good our God is. Okay? Right. If you ever feel like you got rebuked by somebody, uh, you better check your spirit because hopefully it's for a turnaround. God's, God's rebuke is always for a God turnaround. Amen? Mm-hmm. That's who he is. That's what he does. His best is on the other side of your worst. Amen? Yeah. So here's Paul. And he says, God's love... Controlling us. God's love controlling us. Before he says anything else in this letter, his next phrase is God's love controlling us. So in order for God's love to control us, we must be first submitted to faith. Amen? Amen. Because Christ's love can only control what is submitted in faith. God, it should be so much easier if you just did this. Okay, submit. No, 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 I want you to take away my desires. No, 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 submit your desires. God, I, I want to I wanna grow and I want to preach and I want to do these amazing things for you. Okay, submit. Yes. God, I want to go and I want to get married and I want to get a job and I want to do all of these things. And he's like, you're 17, start submitting now. See, Christ's love controlling us. Paul is speaking to the potential. Paul is speaking to where the church finds themselves that Christ's love controlling us will take you further, will do more, will accomplish. You will actually see more Christ controlling you than he will control yourself. You will go further with Christ controlling you than you will controlling yourself. Your marriage 
will be more restored. Your mindset will be more restored. Your identity will be more restored. The more Christ's love is controlling us, then any of it will be with you in control. And with you in control. And with you in control. Hi, nice to meet you. And with you in control. And with Matt in control. I don't like that. God, I want to do things my way. That's cool. Your results will be your way too. You see, Christ's love can only control you to the level of which you've submitted you in faith. In faith. Christ's love can only control you to the level of which you have submitted you in faith. I love what Jesus or what Paul goes on to say next. It's fascinating. He says, I get the wording right. We regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to his flesh. We regard him thus no longer. Meaning, meaning, if we're not going to regard Christ in his flesh, we can no longer regard ourselves in our flesh. Paul goes on to say, he is a new creation. Anyone that is in Christ, because Christ is now a new creation. He that is in Christ is a new creation. He says this, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Friends, how many of you know it takes faith to believe that you are a new you, not your old you? Yeah. How many of you know it's going to take a lot more faith to live as a dead man than it's going to take to live as the old man? It's going to take a lot more faith to live as a dead man than it is to take faith to live as the old man. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? Come on, somebody. You and I, man, woman, old woman, old man, the old has passed and the new has come. It's going to take a lot more faith to live as new than it does faith to live as you. Rewind. It's going to take a lot more faith to live as new than it is going to take faith to live as you. They say that dead men tell no tales and dead men tell no tales. Dead men just, just tell the truth. And the truth of the matter is that you and I, we can't even follow Jesus on our own. We can only follow Jesus on faith. Do you know it? It's a lot harder to take off your clothes when you're dead. It's a lot harder to unclothe yourself when you're a dead man. It's a lot harder to feel the weight of life when you're already dead. It's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to succumb to the pressures of peer pressure and culture when you're already dead. Am I preaching anybody this morning? Worship team, you can make a way over. Did you know it's impossible for a dead man to pray without God's unanimous power and ability on him? Dead men only pray by unanimous. Dead men, they only believe by God's power. Dead men, they only worship by God's ability. Dead men, Dead men can only believe when they are clothed in God's ability. You see, the dead, the dead, we have no rights. The dead, we have no worries. The dead, we take no issue with the where the world is going. We only prioritize the person in front of us because they're dead too. raised to new life. You see, our old eyes, they have to die. Our old eyes have to die. Our old ways of thinking have to die. 
die. Our old ways of living have to die. Our old trails that we used to walk have to go. Our old self has to die. Our old eyes have to die if we're going to see you. We are a new creation. I love that idea. I love that truth. Because here's the thing, a lot of us Christians, we live like we're just a more cleaned up version of ourselves. And God literally says, no, you're a new creation. The earth has never seen Jonah saved by Jesus before. The earth has never seen a Zach saved by Jesus before. The earth has never been inhabited by a Jody saved by Jesus before. The earth has never seen the likes of you. The earth has never seen a marriage like yours. The earth has never seen gifts like yours. The earth has never seen eyes like yours. The earth should have never seen a faith like yours because you are literally a new creation. That old, that's gone. What you are, what you are is a person full of faith. Yeah, yeah, who used to be was depressed as get out. But who you are now is full of demands. Anxiety used to rule your life. But now you exist from a place of expectation.
prayer banner back there. We got a team ready to pray with you. Even if you don't know what you need prayer for, they got you. Two, we're going to go back into this last song and we're going to pray and we're going to praise and we're going to worship and we're going to ask God. We're going to ask Him, have we seen how He sees? Have we tasted how He tastes? Have we experienced what He's experienced? Have we done what He has done? Friends, it's hard to follow Jesus if you can't see like Jesus. like Jesus because where Jesus is leading you faith will be required from you it might be old school but we're going to bow our heads we're going to close our eyes we're going to start worshiping and we're just going to ask God this morning no one's looking around no one's judging right now we're going to begin to sing and you know what it might be old school but let's just begin to ask the Lord to open the eyes of our heart open the eyes of my heart Lord
And it says, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything in according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. And I just think that in this moment right now, that if you are in this place and you feel like what Matt preached today, like you've been lacking faith, that you've been operating out of a place of only what your eyes can see and not out of a place of just having that absolute faith in Jesus, that there is never a bad time to ask for more faith, to ask that he build your faith up. So if that's you, if you feel like you just need more faith, I just want you to raise your hand. Just raise your hand if you feel like you want more faith. That's awesome. That's great. I'm raising my hand because I want more faith. I want to be able to operate out of a place where I'm not just going off of what I see, but off of that absolute faith that Jesus is, is capable of everything he says he's capable of. So we're just going to pray together. Whether you've never experienced Jesus before or whether this is just you asking him to build your faith in him that you Right off because we want to.